QWERTY. It sounds like a weird word, like the name of a Muppet or, um, uh, QWERTY. Could be one of those text words. A new kind of airport security. Definitely meant for children under 12. Anabolic steroids. Toilet brush bristles. No, hold on, that was wrong. <laughs> Stuff that comes out when you floss. I have no idea. It's the first six keys in the top left corner of your keyboard. Like if you were gonna read it. QWERTY Something like that. If it were a word, it should mean outdated and purposefully designed with the intention of inefficiency. Have you ever wondered why when you get typing really fast, your hands have to move all over the keyboard? QWERTY's to blame. This finger was not designed to reach that far. You're not a contortionist, you know. I can't reach it. I mean, the keys under your fingers when they're at rest aren't exactly the most common ones in the English language. Or any other language, for that matter. ASDF JKL semicolon. Oh yeah, really useful. Unless you're writing computer code, I'm gonna guess you use semicolon about as much as you use pipe or tilde, unless you're being flirtatious online. The original keyboard layout on old typewriters was alphabetical, but some of those letters were too close and the typist got too fast, so the hammers would catch each other, like this. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, you probably don't. Go get a typewriter, then you'll know what I'm talking about. When I was in high school, there was a typewriting class with real typewriters in it. There's a lot of this going on. So Christopher Scholes developed a keyboard that would spread out those letters. No more jams. But that means the keys you type the most often and the fastest are further apart. And that means you have to move your hands and your typing is going to be slower. In addition to spreading out the letters, some people argue that the QWERTY keyboard was designed intentionally to be even slower to further reduce typewriter jams. I happen to believe that brand of conspiracy theory. It was a plot to slow down the hardworking secretaries of our nation and keep them in subjugation to their evil bosses. Intentional or not, spreading out the keys more means you have to move more, which means you're slower typing. Mission accomplished. Why do we still use it today? The same reason we still do a lot of dumb things. Because we've always done them that way and it's too hard to learn to do it a better way. And I mean, think about it, changing all those keyboards. Like, you have to pop all the keys off and put them back on. I just can't get these keys out. It's just, it's too hard. Advocates of QWERTY say it's inconvenient and inefficient to learn something different than what everyone else uses. But you don't have to walk around with a keyboard under your arm. We use computers, not typewriters, and in a matter of seconds you can go in and change the keyboard configuration of a computer and then change it back again when you're done. So are there any other options? Yes, and my favorite is the Dvorak keyboard. I should hold it up. It looks like this. Kind of the same, but very different. It's designed to minimize your need to move to type the most common words. A, O, E, U, H, T, N, S are under your fingers. So you can type a lot of words without ever moving your hands, like sheets and that and tote and snot and these and hot. You get the idea. And you don't need to go out and buy a special keyboard. Just get a run-of-the-mill plug-in USB keyboard, pop out all the letters, and pop them back in in the right order. As always, we left you a link on our site to show you how to change this into this. But the nail in the coffin is this. The world speed record set on a Dvorak keyboard, not a QWERTY. Is QWERTY slower? Yes. But be warned, if you try a new configuration, you're not going to be as efficient to start out with. It takes a little time to relearn. And if you learned on a QWERTY, every so often it comes back to haunt you. And it will look something like this.